I wonder what it was specifically about using the public transport system that always brought about a new wave of anxiety each time I had to take a ride. I remember sitting beside my mom in the stuffy Matatu in Kampala and her telling me to get used to this life because it was how I would have to move around at some point. Could never be me, I thought to myself. And it wasn't just the comfort of affording private transport that appealed to me so much, but also being able to avoid the anxiety that came with carrying out conversations in a language I could barely speak. I sometimes pictured a time when I would be able to comfortably hold a conversation in my language and wondered how it would feel to belong. I longed for the sense of warmth this would bring. When my family and I moved to Nairobi, my experiences trying to navigate through primary school in a foreign land further deepened these anxieties. I obviously began to imitate the accents of the people I was most surrounded by, my Kenyan peers, and somehow I felt more like I belonged in the space. I remember standing up during a class test to ask my teacher how to spell plastic bag because I thought it was the answer to one of the questions. Instead of saying plastic bag, I asked my Kenyan teacher how to spell Kavera. I had been taught that was what a plastic bag was and actually wondered what people from other homes and countries call the things they line their dustbins with. That day, my teacher looked back at me with the most confused expression on her face, asking, please repeat what you said. And I looked back, repeating the word Kavera louder and louder each time. This gap between me and the communities I lived in extended until my university life. Living in an African country and being from another African country will always lead to the question, so, what language do they speak in your country? It always seems to be an identifying factor as though to confirm that one's claim to be from a certain country are in fact legitimate. Living in the Eastern Cape for the last three years has exposed me to several languages, from Kosa to Zulu to Sibet. People here take pride in speaking their languages more than in any other place I have ever lived. These languages unify each tribe in a unique way, and even in such a diverse society, people are still able to feel that warm sense of home in the sound of another's voice. Being a part of these three spaces, but never feeling truly at home in any of them, gave me the answer to the cause of my anxieties. It is possible to exist as a result of several different parts that in the end make you whole.